Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Gospel Reflection for this Friday in the seventh week of our Easter season. And today we celebrate the life of St. Philip Neri. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel today comes from John chapter 21, verses 15 to 19. Jesus showed himself to the, his disciples. And after they had eaten, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he had asked him the third time, Do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. I tell you most solemnly, when you were young, you put on your own belt and walked where you liked. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put a belt round you and take you where you would rather not go. In these words, he indicated the kind of death by which Peter would give glory to God. After this, he said, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned earlier, today we celebrate the life of St. Philip Neri. Philip was born in Florence in 1515. And at the age of 18, he went to Rome and earned his living as a tutor. He undertook much needed charitable work among the young men of the city. And he started a brotherhood to help the sick, poor, and the pilgrims. He was advised that he could do more good as a priest, and so he was ordained in 1551. He built an oratory over the church of San, San Girolamo, where he invented services consisting of spiritual readings and hymns. He continued to serve the young men of Rome, rich and poor alike, with religious discussions and by organising charitable enterprises. He had a particular care for the young students at the English College in Rome, studying for a missionary life and probable martyrdom in England. He inspired other clergy to emulate him and formed them into the congregation of the oratory. An oratorian foundation still flourish in many countries today. Philip died in Rome in 1595. Ordinarily, I would finish this little history at this point. But I'd like to share with you a little more of Philip's life. Philip was an enemy of solemnity and conventionality. When some of his more pompous penitents came to him for confession, he imposed weird and wonderful deflating penances on them, 
such as walking through the streets of Rome, carrying his cat. When a novice showed signs of excessive seriousness, Philip stood on his head in front of him to make him laugh. When people looked up to Philip too much, he did something ridiculous so that they should not respect someone who was no wiser and no less sinful than they were. In every case, there was an excellent point to his pranks to combat pride or melancholy or hero worship. Laughter is not much heard in our churches, and perhaps that's to be expected. But outside of church, Christians should laugh more than anyone else. We should laugh from sheer joy that God bothered to make us and that he continues to love us despite the idiots we are. Everyone is a sinner, but Christians are sinners redeemed. An undeserved rescue that we make even less deserved by everything we do. It is too serious a matter to be serious about. All we can reasonably do is rejoice. A lot of the saints, like Philip Neary, have an abiding terror of being looked up to. For they know their imperfections better than anyone else. And being revered by other people is doubly bad. It is bad for the others who should be revering God instead and for themselves because they might be tempted to believe their own image and believe themselves to be worthy. We are not saints yet, but each of us should be aware and beware. Uprightness and virtue do have their rewards in self-respect and in respect from others. And it is easy to find ourselves aiming for the results rather than the cause. So let us aim for joy rather than respectability. Let us make fools of ourselves from time to time and thus see ourselves for a moment as the all-wise God sees us. And so we ask, St. Philip Neri, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thanks for joining me for our Gospel Reflection today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our week. And until then, take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.